Turning the beater on is really simple, but you do need to remember to turn both halves on. To power this one up, reach over the back to the on-off button, and then just power your computer up. So now your system's powered up, you need to log in. And just type in the login details and password that we gave you. If you have a touchscreen computer, you can use the virtual keyboard at this point. And then just click login. If you want to input a new patient, because you've got some x-rays you're taking, just hit new. And then input the patient's ID, last name, first name. We tend to have these set to be required fields, and we can add other things in to be required fields too. So we'll go for BCF, BCF for this patient, and then just hit require study. Now you're in your image acquisition page, you can choose the body part that you're about to process. So we'll use full limb and foot DP. All of the things that within here we can actually customise if you want us to. And you can add additional shots as well. And now we'll process our plate. So once you've chosen your body part and make sure that your projection's highlighted, all you need to do is input your plate. Red arrow to red arrow and simply push it in until it stops and then give it a little shove and the machine will start processing your plate. As you can see, your image is now started to appear here, and in a moment this will load into the main screen. And here's your first shot of your image. Once you've taken your picture, you have two options. If you're happy with the picture as is, you can just hit accept. That saves the picture as it is. And later on, if you want to, you can always go back and reprocess it again. Alternatively, if the picture is incorrectly orientated or you want to make some changes at this point, all you do is click on to reprocess, give the machine a moment to move into the next page, and then you're ready to reprocess your image. Along the top here, you've got a selection of tabs that give you different options as to different things you can do with the picture. First of all, I tend to always edit my mask. The system provides a mask which will, should match up to your collimation, but sometimes there's things you want to crop off, you know, you've got a sandbag in the picture. So all you need to do is hit edit mask, and then you can drag, using the mouse, this in, your collimation box in, so that you can tidy your picture up. And once you're happy, if you hit process, it'll apply the new black mask to the picture, so it looks a little bit tidier. The next screen across, takes you into your windowing and this is useful if your, your exposure is slightly out so you can just tweak the picture and you can just see the background changing as I'm playing. As it's quite a nice exposure I won't make too many changes, just want to make sure it's nicely balanced. Additionally at this point I can magnify the picture up and pan it around if I want to look at one area closer or just return it back to how it was. Next tab along is your annotation, rotating and flipping button. So you can rotate the picture around if it was the wrong way around, or flip the picture if you need to mirror it. The best way to view an image is always with the dog walking off the left hand side of the screen. And if you always rotate your pictures around to be that orientation, the next time you go to view them, they're automatically the right way up, which does look a lot nicer. And as you can see, the foot is correctly orientated. If you need to add left or right marker, because we managed to miss ours off, easy to do, click onto the marker you need and drop it where you want it on the screen. You can also add arrows, and one of the new functions is the fact that you can stretch your arrow, as you can see here, and move it. And you can add multiple arrows as well. And this can be quite nice if you're going to then show the pictures to the owner, that you can have an arrow there to help explain to them where the pathology is. Additionally, you can free type text and drop that onto the picture. You can either use your keyboard or the virtual keyboard. Um, and once you've typed some text in and hit OK, just tap on the screen where you want that to be and that's where the text will appear. You additionally now, using this button, have the option to change the size of the text. And as you press the button, you can see the text gets smaller and larger. I tend to like to keep the text quite small because you don't want it over the top of anything important in the image. 
Here is also where the rotation and flip buttons are. So if you want to search for a patient, you'll be on this front page and you've got a couple of different ways of finding your patient. If you click onto a header, it will actually put the patients into alphabetical order or no, numerical order or even by study date order. You can also search by status and scheduled means that your patient doesn't have any pictures yet because you've not actually x-rayed them yet. So don't worry if you think you've lost pictures. I want to actually search for my patient BCF BCF so I'm just clicking below the patient name and start typing and you can see it's searched down through. Highlight the patient that you want, highlight the pictures that you want, the more pictures you've got obviously the more that you'll see. You'll see a little thumbnail here and then you can go straight to the viewer. Now you're in the viewer page, your images will appear as a thumbnail and you can either drag and drop them into the main screen or double click. If you want to manipulate this picture, you can use any of these buttons and all of them are set up that if you place your mouse over the button, a little prompt will pop up if you're not sure what the buttons are. Some of the most common ones are the zoom button and this enables you to zoom your picture up and also you have a pan button if you want to pan around. You can also play with your windowing by clicking the windowing button and dynamic window width level. And you can see, you can really darken the picture down if you want to and how wide a range you can go. I don't think we'll go for that one. You can also do measurements through the measuring tool and you have a selection of different types of measurements that you can perform. As you see we've got a nice big picture and the machine is always measuring to the plate so as you magnify the picture the measurements will still remain accurate. The only other thing you might really want to do is add some annotation if you wanted to and if you click onto there annotation button and then you can have your virtual keyboard come up again and you can input whichever text you want to and hit OK and drop that onto the screen. So if you want to save the picture to disk just hit CD, New and then you can drag your thumbnail in onto your box and then by clicking onto this box here burn to disk and it will burn you a disk. I'll exit out. If you want to save your image as a JPEG, make sure the picture you want to save is on the main screen. Hit Save Image, Export Image, and it brings up your computer image here. And just choose that you want it as a JPEG, and input the name that you want to save under, and hit Save. If you want to browse the database from here to see if the patient has any additional pictures, just click on to Browse Database and it will take you back to the database picture where, again, you can search for patients' images. If you want to burn your patient straight to CD, all you need to do is highlight the patients that you want, and you can highlight multiple patients, and then just click Burn Media. And what the system will do is automatically load all their pictures in and straight into this box. And then just click on the green tick there and they'll be straight away burnt to disk. If you want to export images as DICOMs onto a memory stick or onto another location within your network, all you need to do is highlight the patient and the pictures you want. You can highlight multiple patients and go to send to and group images. You'll then get a folder box pop up on your from your computer and if you select your computer and locate your removable disk and then just click OK. You can obviously make a folder on there naming it however you want and then export the images as DICOMs. If you have a lot of pictures this can take a little while because they are very large format. Turning the system off is really simple but it is quite important to take your last plate out before you do so. All you need to do is on the bottom corner of the screen, exit and shut down, and the computer and monitor will turn themselves off automatically, and then reach over the back of the system to the on-off button. 
takes 30 seconds to switch off.